I'm not here yet. He's gonna be rolling out like um, a rock star in a couple minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. This is Justin Harvey with We Are Change Orlando, and we are out at the Orange County Courthouse this morning uh, for the rally against the unlawful mask mandates. And as you can see behind me, we have media uh, all lined up, and we have a couple people here, you know, ready to hear the announcement this morning from the law firm of John Stemberger, I think is what its name is, and also Anthony Sabatini. They are. Um, the lawyers that are taking on this lawsuit and thanks to the amazing organizer over here tara hill who has been um spearheading the reopen florida campaign and the groups and the events and they raised you know, over five thousand dollars i believe in one evening to um sue the city of orange county i'm sorry to sue orange county for their unlawful mask mandates uh it started on saturday um as you can see there's Pretty much nobody here wearing masks, except the uh, local media. So um, yeah, there's a big announcement that's about to be made. So I just wanted to go live here and get ready for that because I think it's gonna happen right at 9.30. Looks like there's about 30 or so people here this morning. Um, so yeah, we're about to get started. Some police officers over here, some uh, more up at the front of the courthouse steps, but they don't seem to be too concerned about what's going on here today. Looks like the news is going around and talking to different people that are here today, asking them probably what brought them out. We've got Spectrum 13 is here, um, 96.5 WDBO, Channel 9, and Channel 2 it looks like as well. This is one of the lawyers right here in the black suit. So for those that don't know, the uh, mask mandate just took effect in Orange County as they've been doing across other states and counties in the country. And um, not only, like I was saying the other day, is there a, a statement right on the package of the mask that says it does not prevent against respiratory viruses like COVID-19, but there's also other evidence showing now that, that the masks are dangerous and um, actually doing more harm than good. Constantly breathing in recycled air, touching your face a hundred more times per day, and um, you know, suppressing your own oxygen. And if this virus is actually supposed to be starving people of oxygen, why are we, why are we giving it a head start and depriving ourselves of oxygen, breathing in all those germs that are st sticking to the mask and in turn getting sick? I actually know of quite a few stories now. People have been reaching out, sending me um, information. People who have been wearing masks 24-7 and they're either passing out while they're driving. There was two Chinese boys that died in gym class from wearing masks. There's people that are getting sick and the doctors are saying it was because while well, they were wearing a mask 24 seven and not, not getting the proper amount of oxygen and then, you know, breathing the proper way. So it's a major issue when you mandate um, this for people and tell them that they must wear them. Uh, you've got people with health conditions. You've got evidence showing that it does more harm than good. It's, it should be something that's a request and people can make their own informed medical decisions and choices whether they want to uh, wear a mask or not.
There's also been uh, articles and studies talking about, you know, the way that viruses work, you know, it's not that mask isn't preventing anything. It's like putting up a chain link fence for mosquitoes. You know, it's going to go right around it, right through it. If you want to see more information on the mask research, please check out my most uh, recent post, maybe the second to most recent one on Facebook since this video. And it shows uh, plenty of articles and information about why masks are potentially increasing your risk of infection and doing more harm than they are good. Yeah, we're about to get started. I'm just facing everything. I'm showing everybody the, oh, I see. the crew here, the media, the police. Yeah, lots of press here, right? Lots of press here. I mean, they don't usually set up like this for <laughs> No, this is good. So, yeah, we are impressed with how much media is here. But this is sort of a hot topic right now. I was just down in Miami this weekend and, you know, there's mask mandates there, but really all you got to do is stand up. Um, plenty of places that said masks are required and we went in as a group and ate, drank, tipped, left. Everything was great. Everybody was nice. So just remember that these, these orders, these policies, these are not laws. By no, by no stretch is it a law. So, and even if it was, uh, we have a moral responsibility to disobey unjust laws. So this is just an order. This is not anything that you're a free human being. You don't have to, you don't have to just obey to every single thing that the government asks you to do or demands that you do. And if you think that the government has our best interests at heart, well, then I'd ask you to maybe look at the ingredients in your food and your water, uh, the things that they're putting in our air. Uh, into vaccines, into your cleaning products, your deodorant, your shampoo, the list goes on. So if you still think that they have our well-being at the top of the priority list, look at the ingredients in the products you use. And then ask yourself if this um, mask mandate is really about our health and well-being. We got some of the lawyers here taking some photographs. Cops look over here, look like they're at like a little lemonade station. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's a COVID testing station. I don't know. Yeah, it sucks to see all the police officers wearing them now too, because just a couple weeks ago, none of them were wearing them. Because probably they don't feel it's necessary. And as echoed by the Surgeon General, the World Health Organization and Dr. Fraud, I'm sorry, Dr. Fauci himself, healthy people should not be wearing masks, is what they say. So why are all of these healthy people at their professions, these newscasters, these police officers are clearly being forced into wearing a mask for fear of the consequence? And I feel for them and a lot of these other employees the most because a lot of these people, you know, don't want to wear it. They don't want to be hot and suffocated all day. But they have to because of their current situation. So I guess my advice would be is resist where you can if you really think that it's, it's unnecessary. Some more people showing up now. We're probably getting upwards of 50 people here. Looks like both lawyers are here now. I'd assume that's uh, Anthony Sabatini. So I personally don't know much about these lawyers or these firms. I'm just kind of finding out about them. They're the ones that took on this battle. Apparently, one of them has sued Seminole County 
which is our neighboring county here in Orange County, and didn't necessarily get a win, but got some sort of compromise, I guess, where there's something about the masks and, you know, the, the language in which they wrote it, I guess, was changed because he sued them. He didn't necessarily get it beat, but um, I guess that's why he took it on, because he's got experience in suing another county and some somewhat success over a mask mandate. So it looks like they're gathering everyone here up for a nice backdrop for when they make the announcement, getting all the good signs up front. So it looks like we're about to get started here. Probably going to stream the whole announcement from their perspective. Sure. Yep, I was just talking about that, suppressing our oxygen. <laughs> Alex, I'd uh, love for you to um, check out some of the info I've posted about ventilators and about masks. Um, there's quite a bit of evidence that ventilators and the masks are doing a lot of harm. <clears throat> if you check out some of the recent posts on my wall, there's a nurse that talks about it from NYC. There's a, uh, a bunch of links about the masks, so I encourage you to check those out. So he told me that they were going to start the announcement right at 930, but um, it doesn't look like that was accurate. <laughs> yeah. But it should start here any minute.
you know, once again, it's everyone's absolute right. We're not telling people not to wear them. I just want people to know that there is information out there about them being harmful, increasing your chance of infection, and that nobody has the right to tell other people to wear one. That's the, that's the issue here is the mandating. Uh, suggestions, recommendations, those are great. Feel free to dish them out. But I'd also caution that any recommendation or suggestion from the CDC is probably not in your best interest. I don't trust them for a second. And um, honestly, when they come out with a recommendation, I tend to do exactly the opposite of what they say. So if they tell you to get a, a vaccine or to isolate, I'm probably gonna look at the opposite of that or look into both, both options and see which one is more harmful. Since they're all taking a second, I guess we can go do a quick 5G tour. So this right here, that right there is a 5G small cell tower. There's over 30 of these in downtown Orlando now. See, they just kind of stick it on top of a light pole. Most people don't even know that's there. But for those that work and live next to these things, it's emitting um, unprecedented amounts of radiation. 24 seven pulsing out. So yeah, while it's not dangerous probably to walk next to it or hang out here for a few minutes, the people that live and work in close quarters of these things, which as you can see, there's construction next to it. There will be a new building here in no time, probably right out someone's balcony or right out someone's office window. And um, that's going to be dangerously close. And we've got plenty of studies showing that 3G and 4G and wireless radiation has been harmful and studies for decades. So to put up this brand new technology without telling people, without testing it, I think that's a dangerous situation. And most people don't even know about it. So if you live in a major city, start looking out for those things. They're usually in white or gray or black like this and kind of look like that. And yeah, it's not good to be around it. I don't like being here and I hope this is over soon. Part of the reason we don't do a lot of the protesting in downtown Orlando anymore in the, in the major downtown area is because of these. Who wants to stand next to that all day? When there's literally no, no experiments, no long-term studies, no one knows what happens when you live next to that for a year or six months. You can go to the In Power Movement, 5gcrisis.com ehtrust.org to learn more about 5G. Let's go get a get us further get as far away from that as we can. <laughs> How you doing? I feel like I'm gonna get photo bombing them. So it looks like they're just getting some more photo ops in before uh, they go live with their announcement. Uh, Peter Clark, we actually do believe in science. That's actually. We're more believers in science and a lot of these science people because of instead of just blindly believing government scientists, we look at all the science and come to a sound conclusion. Because when you just um, blindly believe people like Fauci and our, these health experts that have absolutely zero credibility and trust, 
you end up doing one thing and then the next week doing another thing and then another thing because they don't they don't ever have any consistency one week's one week it's wear masks one week healthy people shouldn't wear masks one week it's it's ridiculous so just make sure you look at all sides of the story not just pharma funded science and um that'll get you a lot further pretty awesome that Tara was able to raise this kind of money through reopen Florida in um, 24 hours I mean five grand is really something to pull together that quick so it just shows that people really are uh, passionate about this they don't want to be told you know how far to stand apart and when to wear a mask when they go places and stuff like that so I know people that have been in Gainesville, you know, in counties with mask mandates for quite a while now, and they don't ever wear a mask. Um, most of it depends on your obedience and just acquiescing to whatever they say. And most people go, oh, well, they said you have to. Well, what does that mean? Just, just don't do it. <laughs> there's, not, there's not really any enforcing going on, so just don't do it. If someone asks you, um, you know, you can't buy products in their establishment or you can't go in because you don't have a mask, then... Maybe you tell them that, okay, I'll leave, you know, and spend your money elsewhere. It's kind of how that works. I have no problem. I'm fully and ready at all times to walk into a building and say, you know what, no thanks. Um, if that's how, you know, if that's what they're going to mandate, have a suggestion. That's great. But if they're going to mandate it, I'll just go somewhere else. So it looks like we're about to get started right now. suggest that in the code of orange county 
in chapter 2, article 9, section 2.310, it says anyone who violates an emergency executive order in Orange County will be will be arrested and prosecuted and receive 60 day, days of jail time and a $500 fine. That is the penalty for breaking an executive order, even an unconstitutional one like this. So this is a criminal, this is a criminal law that they passed just last week. If you're going to pass a criminal law, you have to define the terms. Not a single term in this executive order is defined. Uh, the public is not defined. Uh, they've hardly defined the word mask. Uh, uh, patrons of government, whatever that means. We're all patrons of government here in the courtyard getting ready to file this lawsuit or having just did so. And so therefore we would be apparently exempt from this law. And the law makes no sense, is my point. Addition, in addition to that, it violates the due process clause of the Florida Constitution because it's an arbitrary, unreasonable uh, order. It has no, bears no rational relationship to the emergency that first existed. The emergency, the goal of the emergency was to flatten the curve. Flatten the curve. Well, guess what? We flattened the curve. And what have these career politicians yeah. done? Yeah. And what, what have the career government politicians who have never taken a pair cut, never gone unemployment, what have they done once we flatten the curve? They've come with new demands. Yeah. How yeah. else can yeah. we control your life? How else can we uh, modify your behavior? How else can we look important, look like we're in charge? That's what the career politicians and career government employees of Orange County are doing. They're micromanaging the lives of every individual in Orange County to look important, to look tough, to look cool, even though the law itself bears no relationship towards flattening the curve and promoting public health. Um, I don't want to keep on this. There's a few other elements. It's an infringement on religious freedom because now it's, this order has overrode the existing law, the pre-existing law on how churches were able to freely express themselves. That's a violation of Article 1, Section 3 of the Constitution. And then finally, I'll say the privacy clause of the Florida Constitution, Article 1, Section 23. We have very strong, constitutionally protected individual rights in bodily autonomy, medical autonomy here in the state of Florida. And Orange County Commission has decided to completely disregard those in, in order to virtue signal and decide that they're going to manage your own medical privacy. So that's what I'll say. I'm going to introduce now our plaintiff, Carl Jackson, a gentleman who's been like every Orange County Commission. Like, like every Orange County Commission. And, and areas around Orange County uh, uh, affected in a negative way by this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you being here. Um, thank you. Uh, listen, guys, here, here's the bottom line for me. I'm a, I'm a business owner. I'm an entrepreneur. I want to know when this starts. I want to know where uh, where this government abuse of power, in my opinion, ends. And that's exactly why I'm explaining it. Yeah. Yeah. As, as Mr. Sabatini said, we were asked to flatten the curve. We did that. We know that the infection rate is going up. We get that. We get the cases are going up. But we know the hospitalization numbers are, are, uh, aren't bad. We know that the death rate is down. So everything they asked us to do, we uh, we did. And now what they're trying to do is use this COVID-19 to, to further infringe on our rights. And I'm just tired of it. I'm not going to have it anymore. Now Mayor Demings came out and said that if I don't wear a mask, that, then I'm under the, the, the threat of jail. Given the chaos that we've seen in the streets yeah. and, and yeah. everything exactly. that the cops have to take care of already, yeah. do you think they have the time and the resources to waste their yeah. time? Yeah. 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 I've been under the threat of losing my job for a silly piece of cloth right. that even Dr. Fauci exactly. himself has said is virtually ineffective. Yeah. 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 Even if you wear a N95 mask, if it is not perfectly fitted to your face, it is not going to work. That's and right. now I'm being threatened with 60 days in jail or a $500 fine. It's easy for Mayor Demings to come out and say, hey, even though he was unclear, but it's easy for him to come out and say this will happen to you or this will happen to you because he sits in a cush, a cush office. His job isn't under threat. He doesn't have to worry about That's losing right. a paycheck, but the rest That's of right. us do. It's time to figure out who serves who. That's do right. the politicians yeah. serve yeah. 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 That's exactly why 
I'm fighting for this. It may seem like a simple thing with masks, but as Mr. Sabatini said, where does it end? Where does it end? So they start with masks, but where does it end? We don't even have a, a, a definitive date as to when this this is supposed to end. So they, this can just go on arbitrarily. So it's time for it to stop. And I feel like every single one of you should be fighting against this nonsense. The fact that these politicians, the these politicians are using an illness, that's sick to me, yes. no pun intended, but the fact that they're using an illness to gain more power for themselves while we sit in fear is absolutely ridiculous. Again, again, again. It needs to stop now because if this doesn't stop, where else will they go? How else will they violate the Constitution? How else will they violate our, our freedom? It's just getting ridiculous and it's time to stop. Yes. Good morning. My name is John Stimberger with the losses of John Stimberger. I'm a counsel of record in this case for Carl Jackson. Last Friday, uh, one of the pastors of the largest churches in our city called me right after the mayor issued his order. He said, John, I'm not real clear. Can I mount my pulpit and give a sermon without a mask and not be charged $500 fine and 60 days in jail? In fact, can my people come to my church and decide not to wear a mask voluntarily and not be in, in, in violation of the code? So I looked at the code. Um, it says all persons living, living. What does living mean? We live in our homes. Is this a part of my home? I don't even know. It's unclear. The word living is so broad. Um, so then I thought it also talks about that it's confined to public places. Well, is a church a public place? Certainly open to the public. I don't know if a church is not open to the public. It's very unclear whether or not a church is a public place. So as we sit here today, every pastor in Orange County is unclear whether they can get in the pulpit and preach without a mask, whether the members can come to the public place of their church. Is it a public place? I don't know. And be a part of it without being in risk of going to jail. So the members of the church are unclear. Uh, now the mayor's previous, previous COVID emergency order was at least intelligible. It was clear as to who it applied to and who it didn't to uh, on May 1st. And so there was a section in there on religious practices that used the word recommend, strongly urge, highly encourage. So there was no mandates there because the governors made it clear that religious activity are essential services. And so the mayor's order respected and looked after that. Um, and so the problem here is now we're not sure which order is actually uh, in effect. Is it the old order for churches or the new one? Because it's not clear. This this whole order, the, the current one that we're talking about here, face mask, is just poorly done. It's draconian, it's confusing, it's yes. contradictory. Yes. And, and, and I do not wish to be disrespectful, but the mayor of this county is playing games. That's he's, right. saying, yes. Yes. he's saying it's voluntary on one hand, but then on the other hand, he's saying, well, we may enforce it in the future. We're not sure. And it's like, look, mayor, just let us know, is this the law enforceable as a criminal penalty, or is it voluntary? Because you can't have it both ways. In some parts of the orders, it says we recommend to businesses. Then in other parts, to people, it says we require. And so here's the issue. We will leave here today and drop this suit. I'll recommend that my client drop the suit if just one word is changed in the order. All the mayor has to do is change the word required to recommend. Yes. 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 Don't patronize, don't patronize the citizens of Orange County. Right. Let them be responsible on their own, as we've been doing all along. Right. And so this is what our ask is of the mayor. And at this time, uh, we'll have any questions you may have from the audience. Question for um, Mr. Sabatini. You know, state of emergency gives pretty broad powers. I mean, how do you how do you balance the fact that just how broad those powers actually are in the state of emergency. You are exactly right. The state of emergency gives broad powers, but those powers never exceed the Constitution. Yeah. 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 To give you a more specific in, uh, answer, they don't even exceed the code of ordinances referring to the emergency laws of Orange County. 
This order is not even in compliance with its own emergency ordinance within the Code of Orange County, much less the Florida Constitution, much less the U.S. Constitution. So the, the state, or in this case the county, can burden uh, constitutional rights if they can show a compelling interest. Uh, and unlike social distancing, which everybody's clear on, can be helpful. Uh, mask, there's this just there's complete there's no consensus in the medical community. There's just as many studies. And in fact the World Health Organization recommends against the widespread use of masks for COVID-19. Yeah. So there's no consensus here at all in the medicine. Um, so it's unnecessary. Doesn't that violate our First Amendment and civil rights? It does and the lawsuit outlines that. Any other questions from the media? Carl, can you talk about as a business owner how you because in the suit you say you've been your business has been harmed. Can you talk about how? No, it says not his business has been harmed. Uh, he actually has asthma, so medically he's being burdened. Actually, uh, I think this is something that uh, that a lot of these politicians need to pay attention to. There's a lot of secondary health issues that are going ignored, and so you may virtue signal and it makes it may make you feel good and powerful put on these masks, that's all fine as well. But for people like me that have a health condition, you need to rethink, uh, you need to rethink the law. You need to make things clear uh, and you need to provide provisions for people like myself. Right. Other questions? Great, thank you all for coming out and covering the event. Hi, bro. How are you doing, man? Good. Give me just one second. Yeah, yeah. So there you have it, everyone. Um, I don't think the announcement was anything earth shattering. We all knew that they were going to basically announce that they were suing the county for the unlawful mask mandate um, on rights, you know, constitutional rights. And uh, they basically said, you know, if, 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 the, if they want to change the wording, he, if they want us to drop the lawsuit, he said, they just have to change one word, and that's changed the mandate to required. So instead of, uh, I'm sorry, uh, recommended, instead of being mandated, because at that point you have just a suggestion. You don't have to uh, require people to do this under any type of penalty. They also talked about the vagueness of the way it was written. Anyone living, he said, what does that even mean? He says, uh, public places, you know, you've got a gray area with churches being public places. So. Um, they've, they've, they've clearly got some issues with the, uh, the wording of the mandate, and um, now they're going to be suing. And I had about 50 people turn out today, this morning at the Orange County Courthouse, lots of news coverage. So I'm sure it'll be all over the local news. Um, so thank you to Tara Hill for spearheading this and finding these people to file this lawsuit and raised over $5,000 in one night, which is pretty incredible. And um, be sure to share this to all the uh, reopen groups around Florida and anywhere else. Thank you all so much for watching.